They expect a full house at Husky Stadium, and why not? A chance to watch history, maybe. An opportunity for the Huskies to win their 300th game at home. Only six schools in the history of college football have ever accomplished that. To do it, they'll have to beat a very good Arizona team. It's Arizona and Washington. Hi everybody, I'm Rich Waltz along with Sonny Six Killer. Welcome to Husky Stadium, Arizona's Pac-10 opener. The Huskies are 0-1 in the Pac-10. The good news last week, Shane Fortney played well. Mm -hmm. The bad news this week, Fortney's got a strained knee. He won't start and it will be Brock Heward. Well, that's true. Shane Fortney could play if needed, but an, the good thing is Brock Heward has had good playing time this year, thrown some great passes, a big TD pass against ASU, and here he is. Speaking about the quarterback situation, Sonny, Defensively, Washington has seen two pretty good ones so far. Jake Plummer at Arizona State, Steve yes. Sarkeesian of BYU. A little different look here from Arizona. Keith Smith isn't going to hurt you really with his right arm, but boy, those two feet of his are pretty dangerous. Well, he, that's exactly right. Two, TD, two DDs this year, and I'll tell you what, this guy can flat out burn it. And he's not very big. He's only 5'11", so he's hard to see coming out of the backfield. Had a 73-yard touchdown against Illinois. One of the guys chasing him will be Husky linebacker Jason Chorak. Yeah, you know, I look at the quarterback and I think he's a little faster than the tailback, you know. So it's like, you know, they got two tailbacks out there, but one can throw the ball. So it's going to be, you know, it, you know, it, very weird to see uh, them operate their offense. Well, if you think watching two tailbacks with one of them as a quarterback is confusing, if you're Arizona's defense, you've got to battle Washington's two tailback attack. And we're talking about Rashawn Sheehy and Corey Dillon. Sheehy is the explosive guy. He likes to bust it outside. Yes, he does, and he can. He's one of the fastest guys on the Husky squad. Three TDs already this season. Getting close. To, well, he's on his way to 15 like he had last year. He had some marvelous runs last year. A long run against Stanford. A long run against Notre Dame. Had a big one against B. BYU. He goes outside. Corey Dillon operates best inside. Yes, he does. 225 pounds. He also is fast. That little spin move right there allows him to get outside and get in the end zone. Most coaches would like to have one of these. Jim Lambright has two of them. Rashawn Sheehy's the established back. He got the work during practice last week he needed and went out and played the way he did a year ago. He's the one that can make big plays for you, that has a great vision. Corey Dillon is the emerging young talent uh, who, even though he's a junior college transfer, is doing such a great job of picking up our offense, having a role in it, and adding to our special teams as a kickoff returner. And Corey Dillon believes that he can break every play. He thinks just like Rashawn Sheehy and is just a, a tremendous player to add to our offense. The big question, can these two tailbacks and a redshirt freshman go up against one of the top defenses in the Pac-10? Should be interesting to watch. Sonny and I have a ringside seat. Hope you'll stay with us. Washington and Arizona next from Husky Stadium. Absolutely perfect day for football at Husky Stadium, which is jam-packed. The conference opener for Arizona and Washington trying to even their conference mark at one and one. 58 degrees, a little bit of a win. No rain is in the forecast, so things should stay fairly dry. Washington leads this series 8-3 and 1. The last time they met last year, Washington won in Tucson. The Huskies will get the football to start this game. This is one of Arizona's biggest weapons, Sonny. Matt Payton is a great field goal kicker and outstanding punter. It's nice to have them all wrapped up in one. There's a look at Dillon. <laughs> this place beginning to shake a little bit. <laughs> and we're underway. And Dillon will get this football at his two. Big hole and a flag. And Dillon is down at the 30 yard line. Sonny, if there's one thing that the Huskies want to do is cut down on penalties. Really a problem against BYU. They're averaging 93 yards per game, and this return is going to come back. Not a good way to start it off, Rich. There's a look at Brock Heward. Those numbers, 7 of 15, most of the yardage and the touchdown accrued against Arizona State down in the desert two weeks ago. Last week he came in and threw four passes. One of them was completed and one of them 
was intercepted. After the penalty, the ball down the Husky 15 so Shane Fortney, at least to start, to is out. He has a strained Brock knee. Seven, Brock Heward gets the call. Sheehy on first down, and he's out to the 20. He was first and 10. Behind Mr. Heward, he has lots of talent. We talked about Dylan and Sheehy. Sheehy certainly is a guy that can hurt you when he carries the ball and can catch the football. Dave Janoski, along with Jerome Payton, and tight end Cameron Cleland. Mike Reed will see time in a fullback, but the Huskies will go with a one-back set most of the way. Johnson, Sapp, Krutz, Olsen, and Sobey up front. Tony Coates still not back at left tackle, so Lynn Johnson gets the start. Jimmy Sprott makes the stop of Rashad Sheehy, who's out across the 20 to the 22. And it's third down and about six. They used to be called Desert Swarm, but then Teddy Bruschi left and Chuck Osborne left. And now with Sloco, Salavea, Greer, and Tuanay up front, it's Desert Swipe, a good linebacking crew, though really untested. This is the strength of the defense. I mean, Chris McAllister has two sacks, two interceptions, two tackles for losses. And Smith brought back an interception for 88 yards against Illinois. Reed's in motion. Heward. Airing it out for Payton, he's got him at midfield. Over McAllister, it's first down Washington. Beautiful pass right here, Richie. He's coming back. Big left-hander looking to his right. And you got a guy out there, Chris McAllister, who does play just the, the short side of the field, DB. Jerome Payton looked like Arizona State going down the sidelines. Payton. And Heward hooked up with a long pass at Arizona State. A three receiver set now. Just short of midfield. It's first and ten. And Sheehy climbs his way into Arizona territory down to the 47 yard line. This Arizona defense, third in the conference against the rush, first in the conference against the pass, and it was allowed only eight points per ball game. Well, look at the action up front. This is something Coach Lambright wanted to do coming in the ball game. Is to use our strong offensive line, which is getting better every game, and testing those uh, down linemen for Arizona. Still a pretty angry bunch up front, even though they're not the caliber that they have been in the past. Heward has time, lots of it, and Janoski with a catch inside the 40 down to the 37-yard line. Dave Janoski. And Washington's offense is all the way down to the 36 yard line of Arizona on the opening drive of this football game. Nice little three step drop for Brock. Look at that head. You know, that tells you he's looking at all his signs downfield. Crossing pattern right there with Dave Janoski finding the open man. Early on, it looked like uh, Gerald Williams, uh, or Gerald Harris was open down the seam. But look at the time that Heward had. Reed and Sheehy behind Heward. Sheehy down to the 34 yard line. Jimmy Sprott, the middle linebacker, made the stop. Arizona comes in at 2 and 1. Good luck here, Rich. Leading up the hole, Mike Reed. Filling in right there, really not having to get a hand on anybody, but you got to take a look at Bob Sapp in there and Lynn Johnson on the weak side doing a good job. Wildcats beat UTEP in Illinois, lost by a point at Illinois at uh, Iowa. There goes Sheehy in motion, no one behind Hewer, little dump off. Janoski's got it, he's 20, and he's out of bounds at the 16 yard line. Boy, Washington is really spreading the field right now, Sonny. Yes, they are. I tell you, it's not easy for a, a linebacker to be covering a guy like Dave Janoski. Number one, you'll see him coming across the field here. Number 42, Jimmy Sprott, right there having to go out and get him. Just a simple clearing pattern with a guy coming underneath. Nothing really extravagant about it, but tough for a linebacker to cover. A look at Janoski, a couple catches on this drive. Sheehy stumbles his way inside the 14. Good penetration. By Joe Salavea, the senior. 
Excellent job by Arizona to be slanting in the right direction that time. Husky offensive lineman couldn't get out and make the initial hits on him. Rashawn Sheehy, 45-yard touchdown run against BYU last week. He had 131 total yards. I think Sonny, he was much more comfortable last week having run a week with the first offense and maybe getting back on the turf as well than he was against Arizona State. Cured with time again inside the Payton makes the catch lost the football but he's down at the 10 yard line. Kelly Malvo on the coverage along with David Phipp. It's a pickup of four. Here's a good look at Mr. Brock Cured right there. Some people might think that he's looking at the receiver all the way but actually he's looking to see who's going to be coming open. Here's looking out to the side. Now he had a couple options right there. If somebody doesn't pick up Freddie Coleman, he'd be going to Fred Coleman. We must note that Coleman's back in the lineup. He did yes. not play last week against BYU. She in motion. Heward inside. Payton with a catch. And he's down to the one. Gorgeous throw by Heward who threaded it in. And Payton has been finding the open seam. Throughout this initial drive. Look at it right here. This is one thing. He's a classic throw, bullet right there, right in the seam. I, you know, that's a lot easier to do when you're six foot five. Now, a guy like Keith Smith, 5'11, is a little tougher to get that pass off. First and goal for the one. You saw Heward looking at that wristband. He's got the play scripted. First and goal from the one may be very simple. Sheehy behind Reed. Cam Kitzel in fumble. motion. Fumble. Who's got it? Heward, I think, might have picked it up. He did. And so it'll be second and goal from maybe just outside the one. A little anxiousness by Brock Heward and also the center. The exchange. Now, he, he hasn't done a lot of goal line with the starting center, Rich. So a lot of times, he's not used to the way he fires out on the goal line situation. And he's got to hang in there a little bit longer. Olin Krutz, the center. Second and goal. That's Kissel in motion. He was moving forward. There might be a flag. In the end zone goes Sheehy. A flag is down. You saw Kissel moving, and as soon as he started forward, Sonny, I think that prompted the flag. Good call. Gordon Reese, our referee. On the offense, five yards from the previous spot, still second down. Coach Lambright going, what's going on? Watch the H back right there. You're right, Richie. Good call. I think it's tough for an H back to, you know, you're going in motion, going sideways, and you're anticipating the snap count. It's really hard because you want your strong foot to be able to push off on. Well, now a three receiver set. With Coleman, Payton, and Janoski, and Heward's going to call timeout. Heward calls a timeout. <laughs> we'll take a timeout. No score. Second down and goal to go. Washington with the football. We're just underway. The ball just inside the Arizona seven yard line. The Huskies have driven length of the field and they've stopped themselves. It has not been Arizona's defense. An illegal motion penalty and a fumbled snap. Heward has obviously been right on the money on this drive. <laughs> Can't ask for anything better than that outside of a touchdown pass. Which is probably what Washington might have been talking about here. They've got second down 
And they're almost at the point where it's too far to try to bang it in twice. They have run the option a few times down in this neck of the woods. He'll put it up. Had a man open, but then tucked it under. And he's down to the four yard line. Sonny, as Heward moved to his right, he had a man flash open, but it's difficult to throw back when you're moving in that direction. For a left handed quarterback to step to his right and throw at the same time, it's tough. Yes, it is. You cannot, and the only way you can do it, Rich, is you get your feet and your shoulders completely turned the opposite way of the throw. Third down and goal. Just underway. First drive of the football game. Heward. Got it. Gerald Harris. Touchdown, Washington. He beat Michael Smith on the coverage. And that touchdown pass you ordered has been delivered. Watch the fake on this, Rich. Good job right here. Rashawn Sheehy selling the run. Coming out, he had an opportunity. Owen Krutz out there helping him out. Gerald Harris running the underneath pattern. Jerome Payton had cleared out in the back of the end zone. Flags go down. That was a reoccurring theme last week for both teams. And they will kick it again. Offside Arizona. Now do you go for two or kick it again. Rich? That's an interesting thought because. Half the distance the goal would move it. Half the distance to the goal. We'll try the extra point again. About the one and a half, but I would suspect that Jim Lambright feels it'll be a long afternoon and get your point while you can and get your defense out there. And so Washington will take it seven points. And put that defense out there. A very, very big drive. 85 yards in six and a half minutes. And on the 13th play, Brock Heward finds Gerald Harris. It's 7 0 Washington. Seven nothing Washington on top of Arizona eight and a half minutes left and you look at the clock and you would think both teams have touched the football. But that's not true because Washington on this last drive. Really ate up the yardage and the clock. Sonny that's about as good a drive as you can ask for to start the football game. It sure is and one thing it does is that kind of offense with the short quick passes forcing those linebackers. Thirteen plays Gerald Harris. Good reception, but it forces those linebackers. They can't do their swarming like they like to do and find the ball and stop in the run. They've got to cover those short pass routes. Arizona very good on the special teams. They have a pair of talented returners, Chris McAllister and Ron Holmes. Randy Jones will kick it off. This is McAllister. If it gets to him. 
And he has a seam. McAllister is out to the 32 yard line. Chris Waddell making the stop on the special teams along with Nigel Burton. There's Keith Smith, 19 of 34, 144 yards. That's not really the impressive part about Keith Smith. He ran for 143 yards last week against Illinois. Gary Taylor in the backfield behind Kelvin Eaton. And a two tight end set and Smith is going to put it up. For the sideline, Richard Dice is there and he makes the catch. A veteran wide receiver, Richard Dice. He's been through the Pac-10 wars before, Sonny. He's a very good receiver. Well, his longest reception of the season has been 13 yards. I'll tell you what, absolutely, Jermaine Smith got turned all around out there. He sold the post pattern extremely well and good pass. Keith Smith, you know, he's that baseball player really hanging out there. That's right. He was a minor league shortstop for a year before he came back and wanted to play college football. There's your offensive line. Portia, Watson, Wyatt, Walker, and Turley. Little option look. They'll do this. And Smith almost squirts loose from David Ritchie. It's a gain of maybe two. It'll bring up second down and about eight. One thing about Keith Smith on this little option, he's 5'11", 202, Rich, so you get a hand on him in there, you're going to have to still grab those legs and wrap him up. Or he can just squirt through there. With, I would have to think his thighs are really strong. 5'11", 202. Arizona now faced with second down. Gary Taylor, that dangerous tailback, he had 143 yards. He touches the ball for the first time, and what a huge hole he has. He's got a first down to the 34-yard line. Tony Parrish made the stop. Taylor ripped up that Illinois defense, and Washington's defense is going to have to pay a lot of attention. Chorak, Campbell, Ritchie, Tuiea. Chorak, of course, had the big week last week with four sacks against BYU. Jensen, Fiala, and Aliaga. And the young freshmen, Jermaine Smith and Mel Miller, have played well on the corners. Tony Parrish and Kyle Roberts are the safeties. Arizona on the move. Smith towards the end zone. And he overthrew his man, Rodney Williams, with Jermaine Smith in hot pursuit. This is something Homer Smith likes to do, the offensive coordinator of Arizona. Spread it out, he will run the option. That time he runs the shotgun. If you remember correctly, a few years ago that Tommy Maddox came to town, the UCLA Bruins, and just absolutely kicked the Huskies apart running that shotgun. It's as varied a look as you'll find, Sonny. I mean, with Homer Smith, a little option, a little shotgun, a little bit of everything. It's hard to prepare for that. Second and ten. Schmitke, Kevin Schmitke, down to the 25-yard line. Nigel Burton made the stop. Kevin Schmitke, the ball carrier. Arizona has always been known for their defense, but this year they Nigel feel down Burton in Tucson the they'll be able to move the football, and they are on this drive. Well, there's a man right there, number 73, Frank Middleton, who wasn't expected to play on this game. There he was, just going across to his screen from right to left, getting a block on the end. Jason Chorak. And allowing Schmidt to get some running room. There's Schmidt. Got a pretty productive year. Gary Taylor in the backfield, and down goes Smith. Jason Chorak. Four sacks to lead the Pac-10. That is number five. Well, I tell you what, he is as fast as you will find. He absolutely dominated BYU last week. Look at this. Jason Chorak must not have liked big Frank Middleton and pounded on him on the previous play. I tell you, he is fast. We knew those BYU guys had trouble last week. Now Matt Payton is on in Arizona for a 48-yard field goal. He's very good, Payton is. See what I mean? Yes. He has a 50 and a 52-yarder and now a 48-yarder to his credit. So Washington took the opening kickoff, drove length of the field, 
Arizona answers with a field goal. It's 7-3 with five and a half left in the first. Seven three Washington on top both teams have scored on their first possession and Matt Payton getting sent to kick off to Corey Dillon. Joe Jarzink is back there as well. And the football will not cooperate as it comes off the tee again. This wind has picked up a little bit, a little bit like last week, where it started about a five to ten mile an hour breeze. Now at about a 15 mile an hour clip, kind of at the back of Peyton right now. This time Dylan gets a running start. That is eight. Seven yard line. Michael Smith made the stop. Returns it 18 yards. All right, now the Washington offense will get the football after Arizona went seven plays, 37 yards, a 47 yard field goal. Well, let's see if the Huskies this time, Rich, start pounding the ball a little bit more and get those linebackers for Arizona thinking those quick pass routes. And that's right moving on the ground. Brock Heward, who was so efficient on that first drive, Reed in motion. Sheehy, Smith, the first to hit him. Jimmy Sprock finishes him off. Well, Sean Sheehy, the ball carrier. Eight and two. Second down and eight. Keel Smith. Tough running there for Sean Sheehy. And Jimmy Arizona Sprott defense outnumbering the blockers. You look on the right hand side of the Second screen here. Good move right there, Salavea. But right here, Armin Williams, Mikhail Smith. It's a little tough to do when you have three guys blocking five. Heward an inside path to Payton. Incomplete. Kelly Malvo on the coverage. First bad ball we've seen Heward throw today. Squeeze that one a little bit. A coverage by Kelly Malvo. Here's a look. The, the Arizona cornerbacks do not flip. Once plays the wide side, that one was deflected. I couldn't quite tell who hit it. It didn't look like a Brock Heward pass. Here's a good look right there. Salavea. Big Joe's reach, reaching out there. Corey Dillon in the backfield now on third down and eight. Here comes a blitz. They pick it up. Cleveland, did he make the catch? No. He trapped it. Cam Cleveland. In the process, might have hurt himself. Looks he was like holding he that left hand. It looked like it, Rich. Probably popped a finger the out in the wrong direction. Hand right hand side of the screen. He's going to be coming down. That was a, <laughs> a really perfect, perfect pass to be a reception anyway. Cam Cleland keeps getting these little dingy little injuries. I mean, Sarshar to punt it. Sort of a line drive kick. Rodney Williams dives out to the 47 yard line. And Arizona has excellent field position, and it starts with their defense. And you can see Keith Smith. Getting his marching orders as the Wildcats get the football for the second time. Excellent job by the Arizona defense, allowing uh, their offense to come up. And also, the punt was not exactly picture perfect. One of the problems we've had this season. Jim Lambright pacing the sidelines right now. Smith, a redshirt freshman. 
out of Southern California. They like to roll them out. That one bounced. Rodney Williams, the intended receiver. Nigel Burton on the coverage. They, they will do this a lot with Key Smith. Get him outside, allow him an opportunity to run with the ball. They say that he can throw the ball extremely well. Jason Chorak is saying hello, Key Smith, here at the end of the play. One thing he's got to remember, Jason Chorak will stay with you. He does not give up. Great speed, but he was a fighter out there. Taylor picks his way to the 50 before he smothered. Jerry Jensen got him. Three yard pickup. Gary Taylor is averaging over seven yards per carry when he touches the football. Longest run, 54 yards. However, no touchdowns. That's because Arizona's defense scored all the touchdowns <laughs> against <laughs> Illinois. <laughs> Good point. Three interceptions for TDs. Here comes the blitz. Smith gonna go upstairs looking for Richard Dice. Flags go down, as does Dice with the football. Is it incomplete? I think so. But if it's interference, it'll be a 15-yard penalty. Dice caught it, but he was out of bounds. Mel Miller on the coverage. You get a good look at it from this angle. Mel Miller, to me, looked like he was face guarding all the way out there on the right side. Well, I don't know. That's a little inadvertent uh, contact. Normally on pass interference, you're going to see the hands push off or get up in the guy's body, but I did not see that on that call from, for Mel Miller. One thing he needs to do, though, when that receiver's looking back for the ball, you need to turn around and take a look. And then you're not going to usually get a call against you. But then that's a redshirt freshman. He's learning every game. Right? He'll Jermaine, walk that one away. He and Jermaine Smith have done a pretty good job as redshirt freshmen. Arizona a little confused right now. They're going to burn a, a timeout. Now they'll reset the clock. And that should give the Wildcats an opportunity to get the play in. The officials are going to confirm. There's Dick Tomey. You don't have a camera. In his you ninth know. year at Arizona. He's done a nice job of that program. They, Wildcats, of course, with their defense, receiving national notoriety the last few years. They've always been competitive in the Pac-10. They've come this close a couple times to go into the Rose Bowl. Well, Dick himself was a defensive coach, much like Coach Lambright. I think the officials wanted to make sure that Dice was out of bounds, and thus it'll be a 15-yard penalty at the 34-yard line now. First and ten. Taylor tripped over his own man. Josh Smith, the sophomore out of Bellingham, got in there and caused the problem. He actually, actually, he's blocked pretty well on this play right here, taking on the, the offensive line. Oh, he got his hand out there. Excellent job. Never give up, even if you're on the ground. I didn't see his right mitt come out and just nab him. Right there. He did a good job of taking out the interference for the other Husky players to be in the position to make the play. Smith now on second and long. He's dangerous when he scrambles. Good hit from behind. Incaliaga got him. No gain on the play. Good sandwich right there. Key Smith had to feel that one a little bit. Big ink and look like Mac, Mac Tuiaeo is out there. There's Chorak again. <laughs> I tell you, I love watching Jason Chorak hustle there. There's a, another opportunity we talked about earlier. You've got to wrap him up, get him low. Short and stocky, strong legs, you got to get him. There's a good look at it right here. Covered, nobody there. No receiver open either, Rich. Washington has contained him. 
so far. Shotgun look on third and 12. Outside of the contain this time. But out of bounds. Nigel Burton escorts him out at the 30. Short of the first down. And we'll probably see Matt Payton again. in the Arizona field goal unit. Good job by the Husky defenders. One thing when you got a guy like that that's fast, you got to make sure your angle of pursuit towards him is not direct. Ink Aliaga right there went straight at him. You've got help. Try and cut off any escape route that he may have. In other words, don't let him get outside. Good hustle by John Fiala. Here's, here's Peyton now. He connected from 47. This from 46. Flags go down. And he missed the kick, but there's a flag down. If it's offsides, it could give Arizona a first down. If it's procedure, obviously Washington will decline it. Normally the official, when they make a call, run to the umpire. <laughs> that guy took forever. In no hurry, and it's against Arizona. So a legal procedure. So Peyton misses. And here comes Brock Heward. Sonny, what happened to the Washington offense from series one to series two? Well, I don't think they were throwing the ball as to make an easy catch. Brock Heward had one pass deflected, had a tough throw into Cam Cleland. Looks like Cam Cleveland is not back out there right now. Must have hurt his hand. Jeremy Brigham in. She he drops the ball and gets it back. Oh brother, Chris Ooh. McAllister was right there, ready to scoop it up. <laughs> mm. There's that little mesh thing from the quarterback. The toss hit on his right high shoulder. You've got to be able to leave that running back so he can just look at it. He doesn't have to look back. And he's already looking where he's going to be going. Again, it's a, you know, Brock Heward working with Rashawn Sheehy. He's not really used to him busting out and doing that toss. A minute and a half left in the first quarter. Heward with time. Got his man, Freddie Coleman. At the 42, it's a first down for the Huskies. Coleman, who sprained an ankle late in the Arizona State game, did not play last week. And he's a nice addition to have back in the lineup. Here's a dimension of the passing game we haven't seen at Huskyville in the last few years. Having a Brock Heward like this allows you to throw that slant route, which, you know, coming into last season, we thought we were going to see it. We didn't see much of it. This year, we're seeing it. On first down, Corey Dillon. Corey Dillon the ball he goes down. He'll lose maybe a yard. Mike Sloco, the junior, made the stop. I don't know what it is with this handoff situation here. It looks like it's kind of the old UCLA handoff. Joe Salavea right there getting the best of our Benji Olsen, 76 for the Huskies. A load, big strong guy, 280 pounds. No loss on the play, so it is second and ten. Janoski in motion. A little screen set up to Dylan, who's got a lane if he can get outside. He does right at midfield. Jimmy Sprott knocked him off his feet. Short of the first down, though, it'll be third down and one. Set it up pretty well, but Arizona again, the way they fly to the football, right there, um, Jimmy Sprott recognizing the screen and getting out there and making the play. Otherwise, that was set up real well. The alignment were out there in front of uh, Corey Dillon. That's a good call. Second and long. Well, Dillon can catch the ball. Ask Ken Sheehy. Both Washington backs are good receivers out of the backfield. Cam Kissel is in. As a second tight end, Dillon slams off the right side. It has the first down. That probably will be the final play of this first quarter. And a Husky first down. 
First down, Washington. Am I cool to go? And that'll do it for the first quarter. Jim Lambright and his Washington Huskies with a 7-3 lead over the Arizona Wildcats. Brock Heward and the Washington Huskies with the football at the Arizona 47 yard line. Sonny, here are the numbers, and obviously weighed heavily in purple. Normally, you will see that with the passing yards uh, 97 for the Huskies, 116 total yards. They run some very good routes, started off early with a little short, little uh, zone routes, forcing their backers to cover, and had a couple of nice post patterns uh, for big gains. Corey Dillon remains in the ball game. Janoski in motion. Heward can't find him. We'll bring up second down and ten. Good job by the Husky line to pick up uh, Chester Burnett coming on a little blitz out there. 35. Yeah, Arizona will send some people at you. Yes, they will. Dylan on a pitch inside the 40 and down to the 34 and that's what makes Corey Dillon so effective his strength at 6 2 220 the kid from Franklin High School he has a load to bring down watch ahead of him right there Benji Olson 76 staying with it still taking on guys but really Corey Dillon that just really shows how big and strong he is rich. Better toss right here. A little bit of better match. The reason is they normally work together in practice. He's not used to Rashawn. Excellent job downfield blocking. And Corey Dillon, it's an excellent run by the Huskies. First and 10 at the Arizona 34. 7 3 Washington. Dillon slams over the left side, and this time he runs Corey into Dillon. Chester Burnett and Armand Williams. Armand's a very Armand active Williams whip linebacker on the weak side. Excellent speed. That's the reason he's playing out there. They decided to move him out there in the spring. Corey Dillon getting the bulk of the work on this drive. Here comes the blitz. Heward's in trouble, and down he goes. I think it was Chester Burnett. Face mask, maybe. And you're right, Sonny. He did grab the mask. Don't know that it'll be the 15 yard variety, probably a five yarder. Chris McAllister coming on that blitz as well. From his corner. Face mask on a defense, five yards from the previous spot. Still second down. From his corner position, McAllister has two sacks this year. <laughs> they they bring a lot of different people, but uh, I tell you, you're right. He also has a couple what tackle for losses and playing that short side of the field on that Arizona defense. Normally, as the blind side of most quarterbacks, however, Brock being left-handed should be able to pick that up. Second and four at the Arizona 28. Dylan straight ahead, trying to spin away from. Kale Smith. Smith brings him down. Dylan very close, but I think he's just short of the first down. Good surge right here. Take a look at Lynn Johnson there, the right tackle. 
Corey, see, he run a little high right there, but he keeps those legs moving and he has that little spin move like you mentioned. And, you know, he looks for any opportunity in the pregame. Lambright said <laughs> he expects to score on every play. Third and short. Heward trying to pick his way in. He does. No flag. David Phipp coming over the top. Didn't really make a hit. He just sort of landed on some people. So it's a first down for Washington now. I think he comes in a little late here. I think on a close short yardage situation. Clearly, Brock Heward has stopped. <laughs> I don't get it. Sometimes the little DPs like to get on the action late. David Phipp, though, he junior. He didn't really deliver much of a blow when he got there. Still late. Dylan brought down. Slowco made the stop. That's how you pronounce it. Slowco. Not sure why, but that's how. 12 minutes left in this first half. Dylan trots off. And Rashawn Sheehy back in. Harris, Janoski, and Pathon, the wide receivers, on second and ten. Into the end zone. Pathon got it. Touchdown. Oh, yeah. And he beat McAllister. Damon Hewer to Jerome Pathon. And it's 13 to 3. I tell you, this was absolutely picture perfect. Jerome Payton again is doing very well running that out and up pattern for the Huskies. Good look right here. Brock Heward, Chris McAllister trying to stay. Beautiful throw. But a tremendous job by Jerome Payton to get that distance between him and the defensive back. The field goal or the extra point is good. And so Washington with that young red shirt freshman looking like a well oiled machine right now. Eleven and a half minutes left in this first half. Washington 14 to 3. Two Brock Heward touchdown passes, one to Gerald Harris, one to Jerome Payton, and this last one was a real beauty. Yes, it was. He knew where he was going with it the whole way, looking off to his right. Beautiful ball. It's just the way you draw him up, throwing right over the top, right to the outside receiver. And Payton, with his speed, Rich, no problem running underneath it. Fourteen three. Remember Arizona did miss a field goal their last possession. Chris McAllister and Ron Holmes are deep. That's McAllister. Wales with a kick. Wow. Not a bad kick. That was Wales. John Wales actually doing the kicking. Doug Glant not knowing what to do with the ball. I always give Doug a hard time. One year I said he didn't have film in his camera. <laughs> now if you're Arizona and Keith Smith, you know the Wildcats, Sonny, have moved the football. I mean, not. Huskies have gotten tough on two third down plays, however. Yeah, not on a sustained drive, but they've shown bursts of being able to do something offensively. Smith to his big tight end Mike Lucky with a catch and Lucky spins out across the 45 to the 46 yard line. The sophomore out of Antioch California. This is what makes Smith so effective. They, Arizona likes to stretch him from sideline to sideline. And it's so tough because if you're dropping back in a zone 
the tight end coming from the far side and near side can just find an open spot. They work on it in practice, and that's a good throw by Keith Smith. Your quarterback numbers. Hewitt is off to a fast start. Smith has been held in check. Schmidtke over the left side. He gets blasted by Lester Towns. I tell you, Lester, when he when he hits people, they know it. I mean, there was no doubt that he was going to be going down after that hit from Lester. Although Arizona is mixing it up quite well against the Husky defense. David Watson pulling in there to the uh, point of attack. <laughs> no doubt. Lester Towns with two forced fumbles already this year. Now a little shotgun action on second down and a long seven. Screen. Schmidtke. Oh my. Hello, Jerry Jensen. Jerry Jensen, the junior out of Everett, came flying up from his linebacker spot. Well, that's why they moved him to that weak linebacker position early on, Rich, because of plays that he can make like this and also in pass coverage. And that's his uh, coming to the game. He had three tackles for loss. Linebackers has got to love those kind of hits, huh? Come up, open shot. I think fans find them kind of <laughs> yeah, everybody. entertaining as well. Here comes the blitz. Arizona picks it up. Smith going for Dice. Ooh, that might have been interference. Dice got tangled up. I don't think the ball was catchable, Sonny, but no. there was contact. I agree. There's a good look at Mr. Smith throwing it deep. We've seen this quite a bit from him so far in the game. Looked like the ball was already uncatchable. You're Good right. Call. It was. We see him throw some rollout underneath patterns and throw deep like that, connecting on one. Arizona will have to punt Matt Payton, who has a hefty 44.9 yard per kick average. There's Payton. Good kick, fair catch at the 15. <laughs> And the Washington offense, who has gone 71 and 85 yards, gets their hands on the football again. It's 14 3 Huskies. Fourteen three Rich Waltz Sunny six killer Husky Stadium Washington trying to win their three hundredth football game at home and become the sixth university to accomplish that feat they're right behind Michigan. Rock Hewitt and the Huskies with the football now going deep over the middle and it's intercepted Chris McAllister with a pick he's dangerous in the open field McAllister up the left side. And he's inside the 15 yard line. His third interception of the season for McAllister. The second pick for Brock Heward's year and the first today. He was looking for Payton. Yes, he was. And one thing, he was right there. He didn't know whether to throw it. He says, oh, heck, I'm going to throw it way out there. You could tell it wasn't a very beautiful pass. Not much chance for Payton to even get to that. The only guy open was McAllister. If you're going to throw it away, throw it away. But you can, it would have that duck, <laughs> duck look to it, and you're not going to get the distance you normally would. Now the Washington defense having to stop this Arizona offense in great field position. Smith, Dice, touchdown Arizona. He's the guy they like. Richard Dice, his first touchdown of the season. He's a big guy, and Sonny, they like to get the ball up in the air and let him go get it. He is big. 221 pound wide receiver. The one thing I noticed on this play, Smith does like to throw the out route right here, but Mel Miller, 25, again, when that guy's looking back, you have to turn around and see where the ball is. Yeah. 
And a good throw by Keith Smith. Absolutely. Peyton adds the point. And all of a sudden, in the course of two plays, Arizona right back behind Washington. It's a four-point game now. Boy, this football game turned in a real hurry. <laughs> I'll tell you what, McAllister with the interception, first play after the pick. Give credit to Keith Smith, who made a nice throw. Yes, he did. But he's thrown through a great target out there. It's hard to believe that's his first touchdown of the season. Mm -hmm. Dice, who has the Jay Buner look going. Jarzinka and Dillon. Are deep. Dylan to the 24. That's as far as he'll get. And Washington will get the football, and all of a sudden, sort of a different feeling over there. Brock Kiort doesn't seem to be the type of guy, though, Sonny, that will be intimidated much by making a mistake like that. No, he's not the type of player that gets down on himself. He's always exudes confidence and uh, the, the players believe in him. He believes in himself and he'll fight back. Well, they'll kick it again. Arizona was offsides. Jim Lambright pacing the sidelines. Arizona will re-kick from the round 30. And they'll have to back this one up to the 30-yard line. This should help, but coming into the game, we've talked about them attacking with the run. So far, it's been with the pass. There's Joe Jarzinka. Back with Dylan. Same kick. Not the same return, though. Up to the 45. An excellent field position now for Washington. They kind of squibbed it twice on the penalty and also on this one. First down. It looked like Arizona's going to be a great position, but Corey, good, good block right there. I'm not sure by whom. Nice turnaround. That, that's why you, you take those kind of penalties and have to re kick. Plus, this gives Brock Hewitt a better opportunity to maintain that confidence, which starting from the 45 instead of the 20. Sheehy and Reed in the backfield. And Sheehy is wrapped up. Nice play. Joe Salabea, the senior, came charging through. Look like the left tackle for the Huskies, Lynn Johnson. Here's a look. It's supposed to be a reach block. He's supposed to get out there. That's his guy. Just wasn't able to handle Salavia. It's tough to handle him straight on, much less trying to feel for your pulling guard. Sheehy out, Dylan in. Your uh, average handoff there. Dylan made a nice catch of that sort of half pitch, half handoff by Hewitt. Not too uh, real beautiful place in a row here. Husky's getting tripped up by his guard, pulling from left to right. He actually just tosses the ball in the air. Great job by Corey Dillon to locate the ball, grab it, and make some yardage out of it. A third down and nine. 
Cam Kissel along with Cleveland the two tight end set. Blitz coming Hewer can't get rid of it and he's wrapped up and dropped. Mikhail Smith the sophomore strong safety. And Arizona gets to Hewer. And the Wildcat defense stiffens. Well for two series in a row last one the interception right here Mikhail Smith. They, they'll bring people after you. Sarshar will punt. There's a look at Rodney Williams. Good look at Sarshar. Not a bad kick. Out of bounds it goes. Fourteen ten, Washington lead. Smith swings it out. Rodney Williams across the thirty five and Williams has a first down. And Arizona suddenly has found their rhythm offensively. Well they like to spread it around. A lot of people will catch the football. Homer Smith does like likes a lot of this stuff. Misdirection will play action pass. Things that will make Keith Smith successful. Number one play action. Number two roll out. Number three option. From their own thirty five Smith. On the dive, David Ritchie made the stop. Gary Taylor, the ball carrier. We've got a true freshman up there, Jabari Issa, also uh, in the middle there for the Huskies. But David Ritchie, he needs to start exerting himself a little bit for the Husky defense. And as in years past, the Husky defense has ignited the offense a little bit when they're down like this with two bad series in a row. Gain of one. Smith in trouble. He escapes, not for long. And Galliaga found him and dropped him. Good job by Ink that time. You see him on the left side of the screen. Good pressure. David Ritchie getting in there. It's where you want to do. Push him to the middle if you can. Jason Torek in pursuit. Just squaring up, making sure he doesn't lose sight of his belt buckle on the tackle. One thing about going after a quick guy, you can't be trying to die for him. See that? Shoulders were square. He was looking at nothing but belt buckle. Third down. And eight. Taylor, I think that was a reverse, Sonny, and it never happened. Nigel Burton got in the way. I think Arizona was trying to reverse the football. Well, it looked like it also that Keith Smith has been known to get out there and throw blocks for the reverse type play. You see quarterback right there handing off, moving around. You see the wide receiver right there, Rodney Williams, number three. He was coming back almost as if to get a handoff. The only thing that would fool me on it would be the yeah. counter tray type look with the offside guard and tackle pulling up to the hole. You can see that Taylor also, as he carried the football, brought it out into his hands. As if he was going to hand it off. Peyton fake. It's a fake. Now he'll run it up and hit a line drive punt. That's an interesting look. Yeah. yeah at the 31 yard line. You know, that could be pretty effective, Sonny, especially if it hits somebody downfield. I mean, if you can hit a line drive and bounce it off a Husky, you got a chance to recover that football. Absolutely. It has to be behind the line of scrimmage. Close. Although I don't know if he was really trying to do that. It's a Washington ball. A little over four minutes left. First half. Kissel in motion. Flags down. Dylan the ball carrier. 
Too much action, too long a count. Lyman have to stay in there. Mustafa Sophie jumped on it. Right tackle. See, see the camera in motion, right tackle. Mustafa Sophie, 78. Got up a little quick. He'll bring up first and 15. Washington had a 14 3 lead at one point. Ken McAllister, or Chris McAllister, interception. Set up a Keith Smith touchdown pass to Richard Dice. That cut it to 14 10. Cured. Coleman, yes! Freddie Coleman with the catch at the 30 yard line. Boy, Washington has stretched the field today. Yes, they have. Now watch down in the middle of the field. You're going to see Dave Janoski go through right there to take the safety with him, which allows Freddie Coleman to sneak in behind there. 23, David Phipp saw Janoski go through, comes off coverage. Beautiful pickup by Brock Heward. Dylan trying to bust his way inside. Chester Barnett there to make the stop. They are stretching it, aren't they, Rich? 44-yard catch down, by Coleman. To go for the Huskies. It's nice to have him back this week. Not a bad start. Remember, he does have one interception, two touchdowns. May start to get a little wet out there. It feels like it. What do we say at the outset of the telecast? The forecast is for partly sunny skies. That was the first quarter. This is a tough pass to complete. Brock Hewitt here is just throwing a bullet. It gives a Pathon no opportunity to run underneath it. Needs to put a little air underneath the football. One on one, however, out there with McAllister. That's been a good duel because it was McAllister that the Huskies beat for that second touchdown. But then McAllister made the interception that set up Arizona's touchdown. Heward in and out of the hands of Gerald Harris. McHale Smith had the coverage. It's really tough on this play. Brock Heward being left handed, bootleg to the right. Pressure, Janoski trying to get a block, actually does. But to square yourself all the way around and have to throw over someone that's tall like that, it's a very tough throw. He put some mustard on it, Rich, but Gerald Harris, no way he could catch it. It'll bring on John Wales for a 43-yard attempt. He's 0 for 1 this year. He missed from 38. And he will miss horribly from 43. So Wales is 0 for 2 on the season. The Husky kicking game, which has been a problem this year and last, continues to bother Jim Lamb. Brian, here's another look. Let's see if something went wrong with the snap. Let's watch the hold. See where the snap is. Wasn't a clean snap. Throws little things like that will throw your timing off. Shane Forty did a good job to get it in position when you're reaching back, and you notice that he had a little trouble. Swirling that ball around to get the laces out of the way. Swirl, I meant twirl. Same deal. <laughs> Smith in trouble. Down he goes. Washington got to him. Chris Campbell. East man keeping the ball. Chris Campbell gets that because the of Jason Chorak. Jason Chorak. Chorak with great pressure here from the, the right side. Chris Campbell. Seeing the bootleg, it just Watson goes right down. after him. Blows right by the big guard, 60, 63, Second David Watson. Half, 19 yards to go at the Arizona 17. Leave it up to Chris Campbell. He'll stand with it. Yeah, Campbell will get the sack. Chorak should get some credit as well. 
And Jerry Jensen shuts down Kelvin Eaton. Huskies are looking at two minutes for his two timeouts left. Big long third down play here. Jerry Jensen with a defensive play. The rain starting to come down here in Seattle. Those Arizona boys have got to love this cold rain. Yeah, it is, and you're right. Not only has the rain arrived, but the temperature has dropped about 10 degrees as well. We'll take a timeout. Two minutes left of this first half. Washington by four. Arizona now off to Taylor on third and 17. He's got a ways to go. He won't get there. And the question is will Washington stop the clock for under two minutes left? And the Huskies do. Washington calls their final timeout of this first half. So Keith Smith heads to the sideline. And now Washington will have to use the sideline and first downs to stop the clock. They don't have a timeout to do it. Arizona merely trying to get some positive yards to give themselves a chance to get the ball downfield so the Huskies uh, will get at least on their own side of the 50 yard line. Really not much action there. Husky defenders are all over them. There's the rain. Yeah, it's coming in. And. Certainly it could affect this football game. It's been a steady wind most of the day. It started out about 60 degrees and sunny. But things change. Although I will say this Sonny about this artificial surface. It actually seems to be. A little bit better traction when it's wet. It's a very good wet field. Very good drainage. Payton is deep for the Payton kick. Let's see if he runs around this time. No. Ooh. Payton with a fair catch at the 29-yard line. Not great field position and a nice kick by Payton. And so Washington will have 71 yards to go. They've been able to do it twice, but they ate up almost six minutes each time. A 71 yard drive that took five and a half minutes, and an 85 yard drive that actually took six and a half minutes. They don't have that time. They've got a minute 45 left, and no timeout, Sonny. Well, you don't want to do something that uh, will give Arizona an opportunity. You're looking at a wet ball, although the Huskies have had some practice time with the wet ball this past week. Just threw that one away. Craig Coleman on the pattern. The danger here, Sonny, is if you throw three passes and they're all incomplete, then Arizona has the last possession. And Arizona has all three of their timeouts left. Well, one thing that, that's true, very true, and you don't want to give them too much time. Keith Smith can run that fast, <laughs> he can score from anywhere. However, the Huskies right now have thrown those deep patterns enough. They should be looking to do some comeback routes to get themselves 15, 16 yards downfield. Heward, short toss to the sideline. Janowski makes the catch. The clock will continue. It's not enough for the first down. So it's an interesting third down and three. Shane Courtney with a strained right knee. And looks like he's in need of a coat. I would have one on. <laughs> Payton makes the catch. I think he has the first down. Or it's, he's close enough for them to measure, and that'll stop the clock. Fortunately, yes, the official has his right foot down there. A minute 14. They'll restart the clock.
Heward. Taken down at the 31 yard line. Van Tuane, the senior, made the stop. And Washington's got to get up and run another play. And not necessarily down it. Harris did not get out of bounds. Well, he said he was tackled on the turf. That's a tough call, but you know, he really was. He was down pretty much on the field before he went out. Third down ten. Payton made the catch and a crowd flag goes down. And it will be a 15 yard penalty. And Washington is going to get a break here Sonny yes, because the clock will stop and they'll get a first down and it will move them into Arizona territory I think. Jerome has been working hard out here so far in the first half. This one he really does battle for the football. Almost makes a great catch. Good coverage. Must have bumped him early, Rich. I didn't really see it. Twelve first downs now for Washington. Clock has stopped 25 seconds. Huskies don't have a timeout. Hewer to the sideline. Coleman. If he gets the ball, oh, he's got more than the first down. He's inside the 20. Coleman to the 10. He's out of bounds. Oh, Freddie Coleman to the six yard line. He made the decision, Sonny, not to go to the sidelines and it cut in. And for a brief, and brief instant, I thought, boy, he's got to get the first down to stop the clock. And suddenly he was on his way. Yeah, I, I said the same thing, Rich. I thought for sure he was going to be going out of bounds. Right here, he bobbled it enough. Saw an opening and took advantage of it. I'll tell you what, he's done real well with an ankle that's been bothering him right there. You can see a little bit right there. He's coming up a little gimpy, but excellent job by Freddie. Staying in the ballgame. And a sticky situation here. 15 seconds left. At the Arizona 5, Dylan Malone setback. Huskies cannot stop the clock. They cannot afford a sack. Over the middle. Got it! Touchdown! Dave Janoski! Two minute offense to perfection. See him do this play in practice. Brock Hewer just, he's looking at three options here. One breaking in is Dave Janoski had to see him and he fired it in there. It was right on the money, right on the numbers. The extra point is good in Washington. With that big pass interference call. Fights Arizona right before the half. You'll see on the left hand side Brock is looking left looking left. There's right there the seam. Again we're looking at the linebacker Jimmy Sprott trying to stay with a little scat back receiver Dave Janoski. 71 yards they had to go and they got there with 12 seconds to spare. Twenty one ten. The big play on this one. Fred Coleman remember Washington. Without a timeout. You could see Heward looking at that corner. Liked what he saw and went right to it. Sneaking a peek out there before the snap of the ball. This is what you need when you don't have much time Rich. A good solid pass you're going to get first down possibly and hopefully your receiver can make a big play out of it. Even had a wing flapping out there. Good job, Freddie. John Wales with McAllister deep. 12 seconds left. Sort of a short kick. 
and Arizona will have the football at the 35 yard line with six seconds left in this first half. It's in a it's been a first half of big plays, Sonny. You go back to that, that quick turnaround when Arizona got their touchdown on the McAllister interception, and then Keith Smith right there throwing to Richard Dice. That happened in the blink of an eye, and then all of a sudden, Washington with that 44-yard toss to Coleman sticks it in the end zone and has a 21-10 lead. Well, despite that interception by Brock Hewitt, he's had a pretty strong first half. One of the strongest outings by a Husky quarterback in a long time. Smith for the shotgun. Let's see what he does. Going deep. Tuba player. No. Nope. Almost. Incomplete in the first half. A very entertaining one has come to a close. Washington leads Arizona at halftime 21-10. All right, Washington will kick off. 21-10, the Huskies on top. John Wales had a very good first half kicking the football off the tee. He did miss a 43-yard field goal. into the end zone and he continues to kick the ball well Sonny yes he has you know he needs to do that a little confidence builder after missing the field goal attempt he's come out pumped on two kickoffs and has actually put him in the end zone Arizona will start this second half on their own 20 yard line you can see players on the Washington sideline trying to keep warm the temperature has probably dropped I would say about 15 degrees since the kickoff the rain has let up but the winds and the cold might be a factor as this game goes along Smith in the shotgun to the sidelines it's Williams Rodney with the football out across the 30 it'll be a first down for Arizona when they spread the field Arizona has had some success yes they have Jermaine Smith giving away a lot of cushion out there on the outside seemed like uh, the under the whip linebacker Jerry Jensen also was out of position Taylor little spin move Tony Parrish was there to make the stop all right our halftime numbers between these two clubs you can see that Washington rolled up some big time offensive numbers. Yes, they did. Passing yards. Brock Heward with a big first half despite the interception. 232 yards. I don't know if we've had that kind of yardage in the recent Husky games for a half. Time of possession big as well at 1823. You can see that Arizona on third downs didn't pick up a first down. This is a second down from Smith. As his man Williams escapes one, another, and a nifty move out to the 48 yard line. Tony Parrish on the coverage. Rodney Williams, a dangerous guy for Arizona. Looks as though the Husky defensive backs are giving him a little bit of cushion. Good rush up front, one on one on the outside with Mel Miller. Just missed the tackle. You know, against this guy, you can't afford to miss too many of those tackles because Rodney Williams can flat get downfield. Wildcats moving the football. Second man through, Leon Callen, the freshman. 
out of the Bay Area in California. Callen snuck through. He's got about an eight yard pickup. I'll tell you what, Sonny, this Arizona backfield is very deep. We've seen Taylor, Sprott, Schmidtke, Callen, Eaton. They, they have a lot, lot of they run a lot of guys out there. Yes, they do. They throw to a lot of people and they also have a lot of backs that come in and stay fresh. Second down and two. This is the fullback. Looks like Charles Miles. He's the sixth guy, I think, to carry the football for Arizona today. Check it. It was Scooter Sprott. Miles is the backup fullback. So Sprott becomes the fifth Wildcat to touch the football out of the backfield. And they're all built about the same, Rich. They're all really built low to the ground. Good runners can kind of get lost up there in that line of scrimmage. Good first half. Key Smith, 7 11. Not doing anything really wrong. I mean, he, he has had some great success on the offensive side. Run the ball well when he had to. From the Washington 41, Smith in the air for Williams. Intercepted. Mel Miller. Miller, step for step, and the first interception of the day for Washington and only their second all season. It looks like they made some adjustment at halftime this time Mel Miller obviously being the open receiver it looks like they're looking back at the quarterback and not staying face to face with the offensive receiver. The problem right there on that play though is that Key Smith did not throw to the outside shoulder he got the ball too far inside. Now Heward give to Sheehy, bounces it outside, and he gets out to the 10 yard line. Jimmy Sprott made the stop. Sprott, the brother of Scooter Sprott, the Arizona fullback. Good job by Rashawn Sheehy on that play. Dave Janowski was outside, going to throw a block on him. Rashawn made an outside move. You'll see it on the right hand side here. You can't see Janowski. He goes, fakes outside there. And comes back inside so that Dave Janoski had a chance to make a block and not hit from behind. Second down short. Sheehy stopped. I mean stopped at the 10. No gain on the play. Jimmy Sprott introduced himself again. We had, the Huskies have not really had very much success running between the guards today. Or actually between the tackles. One thing that they've always done well is go outside, which Arizona wants you to do. Third down and four, just underway. Second half. Cured with time. Janoski is open. First down. I'll tell you what, this young red shirt freshman is extremely poised in the pocket. Well, it's really obvious watching him throw the ball today, throwing with a lot of confidence. One thing right there, the offensive line has given him opportunity to get rid of the football. You know, the players on the team say that Brock is a born leader, has a lot of confidence, and you can see it out there this afternoon. A two tight end set. Sheehy. Slithers his way out to the 36. Running behind Bob Sapp and Tony Coates. Or excuse me, Lynn Johnson at that left tackle spot. Coach not back yet. That's right. You've got Benji Olson on the far side who is actually running behind Mustafa Sophie and ben Benny, Benji Olson. Cam Cleland also back in the ballgame making some big blocks. Second and short. Sheehy has the first down. Just enough yardage. David Fipp and Kelly Malvo made the stop. 
You know, this, Sonny, this has all the earmarks of that opening drive of the two two drives that Washington had in the first half, because Jim Lambright has to be very happy that his team is a moving the football and b eating up such immense amount of clock right now. Well, that's what you want to do in the second half. You'd like to do it four quarters, but if you can do it at all, 36 yards, Rashawn Sheehy closer to 100, you're going to have some success. Sheehy will pick up a few more. Boy, he is close to breaking that one. David Phipp made the stop. Here's a good look at it right here. He has the option. He does cut it back. Look at that right there. Mustafa Sofi, Cam Cleland walling it off, creating like a canal for him to run through. That big offensive line. Bob Sapp, the senior, number 72. Krutz, the sophomore center. Second and one. Rashan Sheehy hit by Jimmy Sprott, who came flying through. Sprott is having a pretty good sequence here. He's made a couple of tackles for losses on this drive. Good timing by Arizona to hit the backer. It's a good job. It's second and short. You're going to be hitting the gap right there. Getting by Lynn Johnson very easily, as a matter of fact, on the left-hand side of the screen. Lynn Johnson, normally a guard center, Rich, not used to playing that left tackle and seeing speed guys coming through at him. There's a look at Sprott. On third and four. Blitz coming. It's picked up and Pathon has the first down. <laughs> Jerome Pathon, who had a big first half. Five catches in the first half. This is sixth of the ball game. And again, not only your line has to pick it up, Sonny, but quarterback receiver got to pick that blitz up as well. Well, you're running back in the backfield. Your remaining back has to pick up the blitzer. Your quarterback has to see it. The receiver see it. They're on the same page on that play. Man in motion, George Kiaho. Sheehy. Boy, the holes keep getting bigger and bigger. Seven, eight yards a clip. Second and about three. And there's a wildcat down, Joe Salabea. Can't afford to have him. He's holding that left shoulder real gingerly. A lot of times it's either a jammed shoulder or a stinger, which will go down the arm, Rich, and uh, looks to me it could be a stinger. Look how big these guys are. It's amazing that they can get hurt at all. <laughs> strong. Now, Sonny, they've got feelings. <laughs> 745 left in this third quarter. Washington at the Arizona 41. Kiaho in motion again. Hewer to Sheehy. And he powers forward. He's got close to the first down. It might be just a little bit short. Depends on where they mark it. Jimmy Sprott, who has kind of been Sheehy's best buddy on this drive. They're playing cart golf. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> short yardage situation. Rashawn does. What we expect from Corey Dillon is lowering his head and shoulders and driving through the hole. Cam Kissel there with a late block as well. Well, that's a good offensive line to go behind. Big Bob Sapp, 72. In, 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 Olin Krutz. Inches, Sapp. inches short, they say. than a yard clock continues to roll Washington's first drive of the second half and Heward will get the first down when you're 6 5 220 not easy to bring that quarterback down behind the line especially when you go behind those guys you can see that Aaron Dallin was in there as well probably at a tight end spot Ben Cadlitz was there. 
some fresh legs up front. Good move. Ben Callett staying in the ball game at right guard. Aaron Dalen, 75 at right tackle there. And they go right behind those big guys. A nice hole for Sheehy, who will get another four yards. I guess it's like sometimes, Sonny, and you know, in basketball, you bring some fresh guys off the bench to play the good defense. Well, why not bring some fresh guys off the bench and put them up front and let them go at them, especially if you're running the football? Well, if you're having success doing it, you should play as many guys as you can. Uh, yep, yeah, a little bit of face mask, but uh, couldn't quite tell if it was on top of the helmet or in the face mask. Second and six. Heward turns to Sheehy. And Brock misfires for Payton. Kelly Malvo on the coverage. Third down and six now. The 21 10 Washington lead. Arizona turned it over on their first possession. You can see Larry McDuff, defensive coordinator for the Wildcats. the pitch she he could not get to the corner there's a flag down at the 31 yard line Mikhail Smith up to make the stop and it's holding against Washington if you're Arizona Sonny do you decline it and bring up fourth down at about six or take it and go third down at about 15. Well I think right now with the wind behind them Washington would have an advantage kicking a field goal from this distance. I would say take the penalty. Tick Tomey takes it. He wants the yardage. Now the danger here for Arizona is that Brock Heward puts it up and picks up the first down and keeps the drive going. Third down and 16. Arizona showing blitz. Jarzenka in motion. Little screen. Sheehy a nice catch, but he's in real trouble. And this will bring up fourth down. And Dick Tomey made the right decision. Yes, he did. Uh, third and 16, there's only a few plays you can run. One of them is a screen, but the defense also knows that play. Good job by the Arizona Wildcats on this play. Seemed like everybody was coming for Arizona. Yes, they did. By taking the penalty, we're out of the field goal. Rodney Williams, 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 Williams is deep. Sarshar will punt. <laughs> Nicely done on the special teams. Brendan Jones with a nice catch. Sarshar with a good kick. And it pins Arizona down to the six yard line. Five minutes left, third quarter. Special teams coming up for Washington. Welcome back, Rich Walt, Sunny Six Killer. 21-10, Washington on top of Arizona. 
with five minutes and five seconds left. <laughs> Friend of Sonny. Hey. Sonny, you, you, you have this guy over to the house. Yeah, he, he graduated in the 70s. First and ten, Arizona, their own six. Taylor going nowhere. It's a tough place to operate deep in your own end. Inc. Aliaga made the stop. That's what you want to do if you're Arizona, is just try and get some plus yardage. Even if it's three or four. Two still plus, but not quite as much as uh, Dick Tomey would like to see down here. To the linebacker making some adjustments on second and eight. Smith, a quarterback draw. Dangerous guy. And he's out across the 15 to the 16 yard line. John Fiala made the stop. Close to the first down. Third down, a yard to go. Third and about a yard. Give him a favorable spot on that play. Jerry Jensen, well, just getting caught by his legs. This guy is pretty nifty in there. And it's a good play by a quarterback down in that situation. Second down, keep it. You're not going to risk a handoff. Option look, Smith. I don't know if he got it. Tony Parrish and John Fiala. He had to just get outside the 16. He's really close. I say he's got it. Sonny, I'll listen to you. <laughs> Good child. Two good calls in a row by the Arizona coaching staff to take advantage of what this guy can do for you. Quarterback draw and then an option. A look at Tony Parrish. He's the old man back there. <laughs> a junior. Surrounded by freshmen and sophomores. Smith is going down. David Ritchie. His second sack of the season. And the Washington defense, which caused so many problems for BYU. Just a straight rush right there. Nothing fancy, no stunts, nothing. Just taking your man on one on one and blowing by him. Loss of six. Second and 16. Frank Middleton, the big guards coming back out, or left tackle, excuse me. He's had problems with that knee. The offense would surely need him in there if you're Arizona. Ryan Turley, a junior, replaces him. Shotgun on second and 16. And a draw, Leon Callen. Tough run. Out to the 16 yard line, a tough five yards. He had just about everyone in purple touching along the way. Jermaine Smith and Jerry Jensen at the bottom of the pile. John Fiala forcing the play. The tackle by Jerry Jensen. Third down and 11 yards to go. Third down and 11. Arizona has not had much success in this situation. There you see it, one of six. Smith, got to get to the 28, and I think he did. He paid for it, but he's got a first down. Fiala and Jensen catch him. That's what's so dangerous about this guy. He can throw the ball, but when it breaks down, he can hurt you. One thing the defense sometimes will do against a quarterback like this is you shadow him one backer will watch his keep his eyes on him the whole time that time there's a big gaping hole in the middle for him to pick up the first down you want to keep pressure on him rich you got to bring people and uh, our the young defeat defensive backs for the huskies can hang in there smith for dice oh he got it richard dice is so strong and so good in a crowd. 
and he's quickly becoming Keith Smith's favorite target. Here's a guy that you know in his career Sonny he's been a, a wonderful receiver but Arizona has, hasn't really been able to get the ball to their receivers these past few years. But the passes they've completed long have been straight right down the sideline streak patterns and the young DBs for the Huskies I, I would think would like to turn around as you've been taught when their receivers looking at the looking for the football. Dice one of the better receivers in the Pac-10. Little swing pass. Scooter Sprott. He stopped at the 32, a gain of maybe four. And Arizona has picked themselves up off the canvas and moved the football from their own four-yard line down into Washington territory, the 31. Three key plays, or four actually. Key Smith. Couple runs, big scramble, and a big pass play. The little guy can do it all. Second and seven. Smith for Jerry McDaniel, and it's incomplete. Jermaine Smith on the coverage. Nigel Burton back there as well. A little better coverage on this one. Right there, running step for step with the receiver. Well, you know, he didn't hurt himself with that throw, and, and uh, no pick by the UW defense. But again, it's third and long. Well, Richard Dice has been the guy. He's down at the bottom of your screen. Well, give it to the tailback, Gary Taylor. Strange call on third down and seven. It'll bring up fourth down. And let's see if Arizona brings out Matt Payton for the field goal. Fourth down and about five. Sonny, that really surprised me. Well, when you see a coach for Arizona take off his headset and start kicking the court, you figure that that's not the correct call. <laughs> Maybe the young quarterback Key Smith missed the call coming in from the sidelines or he checked off into that play. Peyton with a 46 yarder. He's missed from 44. He hit from 47. And he misses this one. He misses the 46 yarder. One of the Pac 10's best has misfired twice. And Washington holds on. So a 21-10 lead. We've got 10 seconds left in the third. Here's a look at the hold. Ryan Hessen, the holder. Sometimes when you're a kicker, things can get frustrating. Not used to the surface. Nigel Burton, number eight, feels as bad as he does trying to console him right there. Keith Smith. Even though it did not yield points, Sonny, I think Arizona made a statement. Washington had him pinned down at the four yard line, and the Wildcats brought it all the way out to the Washington 30. Thanks to Keith Smith. Corey Dillon on what should be the final play of this third quarter and that's Corey Dillon at his best running over Wildcats as he went. It's a first down Washington. Good job by the safety David Phipp to come up and get to deliver a blow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that will be an entertaining one in the film session. Sunday. Jim Lambright and the Huskies holding on to a 21 10 lead. Look out below.
21 10 your score Washington on top of Arizona both schools moved the football in the third quarter lots of clock rolled up you can see that Washington now at 331 total yards Heward to the air got his man as she he to the 38. They've been splitting him out this year. And one of the reasons why is if they can get him the football in stride in the open field, big things can happen. Absolutely. Good hands, good speed, good protection. Excellent job. Outside comes in, the inside guy goes out, just finds the open spot on his own. Corey Dillon, he's got nine yards. That's offensive line is all jacked up for the Huskies. It's great when you have the quarterback with success throwing the ball. You've got guys like Corey Dillon coming up there with that big blocking. Look at the holes there, Rich. I mean, they're starting to get a little wider for the Arizona defense. Dylan and Sheehy, a great combination. And they've been dangerous today. This time off the left side, Corey Dillon, Jimmy Sprott made the stop. It'll move the sticks. Corey a little disappointed in himself, but uh, still picked up the first down. Good look right there. Bob Sapp with a big spread there with his legs. Lynn Johnson. Cam Kissel. Tell you what, Dylan is a guy that took a, way, a long road to get here. A Franklin High School product, went to Dixie Junior College, always wanted to be a Husky, and he is this year. Boy, Dylan with a quick pop down to the 20. Another six yards. Jimmy Sprott. Another tackle. Sprott must have every other tackle that Arizona has because his number has come up an awful lot. Very active guy. Right here, people say if there's a little hole, there's a seam. The difference between a lot of running backs is some guys can't make that decision to go and bust through there. And Corey Dillon can do that. Second and four. Mike Reed in motion. Dillon will get to the 20, and that's about it. Daniel Greer made the stop. Greer got the best of uh, Bob Sapp on that play. talked about it in the outset of the telecast how Sheehy and Dylan complement each other. They are right at 55 yards apiece right now. Real luxury when you can keep your legs fresh. Jarzinka in motion. Heward going to him. Incomplete. Kelly Malvo was up there. Got a hand. I don't know if he got a hand on the ball, but he came close. Good job by Kelly Malvo to drop off coverage down below. He was on Jerome Payton getting back to help out. Brock probably had to get rid of this ball a little quicker than he wanted to. Good pressure up front. Van Tuine. Tarzik is not very big, Rich. <laughs> a little tough for him to get up and get that one. 37 yarder for John Wales. He has yet to connect this year. Until there. Right down Broadway. Thirty seven yarder. And Washington importantly comes away with some points. And it stretches their lead. To two touchdowns. John Wales on the board. Look at that. Kept his head down and it showed.
Along with Sonny Sixkiller, I'm Rich Waltz. Washington, three points on the board here in the fourth quarter, 24-10. But Arizona is explosive offensively, and a guy like Keith Smith can get it done in a hurry. Nice kick in and out of the hands of the Wildcats, Ronnie Holmes. Tell you what, John Wales has had an outstanding day kicking off. Well, I would say early on he had the wind at his back, and now the Huskies are going into the wind. That kick impressed me more than the other two that sailed into the end zone because he's kicking into the wind. Good job by John. And now Keith Smith takes over, the redshirt freshman. He led his club on a 41-0 romp over Illinois. That was last week. But only 11.50 left in this football game. And a 24-0 Washington lead. Smith still on his feet. David Ritchie can't get him. Flag goes down. Smith goes down. Campbell. And then Fiala <laughs> finished him off. Oh, that's great. A flag down in an area you would think would be holding. Gee, I wonder who they were holding. Hard to see from right there, but I believe it was Jason Chorak being held. Well, Campbell, I think, was kind of tackled right there. Oh, that, there, that, that might have been the, been the call. <laughs> that, that's a free shot for Fiala. <laughs> you don't get many of those. Uh, a wise decision, I think, to de decline the penalty. Take the sack. Let Arizona burn the down. And instead of first and 20, make it second down. And 16. They've thrown it up top on this type, type of play or quarterback draw. To the tight end, Lucky. And Mike Lucky out to the 28 yard line. He's short of the first down, though. He's got to get to the 30. Clock continues to roll. Aliaga and Fiala made the stop. Randy Hart, the defensive coordinator. Dick Baird, the linebacker coach, very, very proud of the quartet that he has. I thought that Ink Aliaga was going to be in perfect position prior to the throw. However, uh, he got jinxed a lot, he got juked a little bit right there. Third down three. Movement and chaos, actually. Willie Walker and Ryan Turley, the left side Quarter of that snap. offensive line. Full start on the offense. Five yards for the previous clock. Still four down. Excuse me there, Gordon Reese is our referee. Arizona not helping themselves out with the penalty. Dick Tomey wanted to find out who it was. Yeah, both right. those guys, Walker and Turley. They're anticipating a little of pressure from the front seven of the Huskies. They should get pressure here. A four man rush though. Dice is open, but it's overthrown and picked off. Tony Parrish. Parrish, touchdown, Washington. Richard Dice was open, but Keith Smith could not find him. It appeared to me that Richard Dice may have altered his route a little bit. Quarterback surely thought he was going upfield. Richard Dice breaking inside. Tony Parrish, great job of returning the football after the pick. Frank Middleton, 73, no chance. And Washington has to call a timeout. Their extra point team not prepared for this. Excellent pick. Tony Parrish right here walking the tightrope down the sideline. John Fiala, excellent block downfield. Rest is Tony Parrish. You know, coming into this game, Rich, Husky defense was talking about turnovers. 
and picks get that ratio back to where they were last year. That'll certainly make Randy Hart a happy man today. Now Washington, you're right, led the Pac-10, 16 interceptions last year. They had just one coming into this football game. Jim Lambright, who knows a thing or two about defense. Well, the thing is, too, you know, the Friday before the game, Thursday, actually, you go through every special team, you call them on the field, <laughs> you call them off, you call them on. Everyone knows who's on these teams. Yeah. I think, though, the punt return team was ready to storm the field. <laughs> and instead, it was the field goal unit, the extra point unit. Parrish getting a little help. I could use a little of that. Well, now he has an intercept to go with those pass deflections he's had this season. Just a junior. And Wales true to form. It's a 31 10 football game. Tony Parrish, 45 yards on the return. And the Huskies are rolling at home. Thirty one ten Washington on top of Arizona ten fifteen left in this football game time to take. Well we'll do it in a moment thirty one ten your score. And the Huskies will have to kick it away. The sun has. Resurfaced. McAllister and Holmes that's a look at McAllister. They are dangerous. John Wales has been able to kick away from them or basically over them. Holmes will put it in the end zone. Back to action. Keith Smith overthrew his man. On the coverage, Alex Hollowell. Boy, it looked like uh, Rodney Williams didn't expect the football. And Keith Smith is saying, if I'm going to throw it to you, you got to be able to catch it. Had lots of pressure from the right side. Mr. You Know Who, Jason Chorak. Yeah, see, Williams was not, he didn't even run a route. No, he was just throwing that baby away. Two interceptions, the latest one brought back for a touchdown. Smith unloads, got his man, and his man got it. Gary Taylor made the catch. Mel Miller, now incomplete. Mel Miller on the coverage. Boy, Taylor coming out of the backfield was wide open. Watch him sneak a peek though here. He can feel somebody coming after him. Good job again, Arizona, but whoa, right in the numbers. Probably not used to the sun, Rich. It's been a while since he's seen it. <laughs> Say Friday when they left Tucson. And out of bounds goes Smith at the 17 yard line. Keith Smith close to the first down. Here's a look. Good pressure by the Husky defense, but this guy is so sneaky. A little short, choppy steps. Gets outside. A personal foul at the end of this call. All he did was push him. He wasn't completely out of bounds by the time he pushed him or finished pushing him. After the penalty, 
Out to the 43 yard line. Thirty-one ten, first and ten, nine fifty left. Inside handoff, Callen still on his feet, and somehow manages to get himself out to midfield. John Fiala made the stop. Nice carry by Leon Callen. He has been a tough runner all afternoon. Good job by Jason again on the far side. Blocked well. Put his hand up. See it to the right side here. Diving for the feet. Excellent job by Callen to keep his balance. When you're built that low to the ground, it's a lot easier. Inside handoff, Callen again. And he's out to the 40 of Washington. Jensen made the stop. When you've got a lead of 31 10, you really would like to see the Husky defense play a little tougher. We had some new kids in there. Jabari Issa in the middle, 95, just going back out, Mac Tune back in. But you want to keep the pressure on with nine minutes to go. You never know what could happen. Smith with lots of time got dice wide open and he hits him at the 30. He'll be dropped at the 31. Kyle Roberts made the hit. Short of the first down though. And the clock well they may measure this one. I sure like this little Keith Smith. He's a real nifty quarterback here you see the defensive front of the Huskies. Stabilized up there at the line of scrimmage. Soft zone. Had the time, Dice finds the open spot. Coach Lambright telling Coach Pelour there, hey, come on now, let's stay, let's stay aggressive out there with those backers. Scott Pelour, the actually a former Cougar who has joined this staff. He's a welcome addition to this staff. Spent some years in the Big Sky Conference. Stays, I'm sorry, Rich, he just stays positive all the time. Yeah, he is a very fiery individual. Just the type of guy you want working with your defensive backs. We had to call his brother Steve, make sure it was okay. Hire him on here at Huskyville. He's okay. Although Arizona is on the move. Good time. How, how big is that parish interception return right now? Fumble. Who got it? Smith was trying to get down and pick it up. Washington thinks they have it. Depends on who's strongest at the bottom of the pile. A lot of times it's not who recovers it. Arizona has it. It's who can wrestle it out. There's a lot of nasty things that go on in those situations. I mean, pinching and just to name the <laughs> least offensive thing. I was waiting for the list. Yeah, well, <laughs> we can't. We can't give the list. Dick Tomey, happy to see that the Wildcats picked up the fumble. Very class guy is Dick Tomey. He's an avid baseball fan. In fact, he plays on a senior baseball team down in Tucson. I'd like to see him try that in Seattle. Might not get as many games in as he does in Tucson. All right, Jim Lambright pacing in front of the Washington bench. Arizona. With eight and a half minutes left, the Wildcats have moved the ball in the second half. They do not. The Wildcats have moved the ball in the second half. They do not have a point to show for it. Callen, down he goes. Jensen, and big hits by Mac Tuiaia up front with John Fiala. A little easier to bring a guy like that down when you meet him head to head. John Fiala's been doing it so far in 96. Can't arm tackle that kind of guy. Arizona now at 240 yards. Washington, an impressive day at 370. Shotgun for Smith. To the sidelines, Williams makes the catch and then falls out of bounds. 
inside the 26. Love to see that one again if he had possession of the ball while still in bounds. Mel Miller on the coverage. This guy does fling the ball pretty well, Rich. Here's a good look at it right here. Receiver out to the right. Yes. Only takes one. Third and five. Oh, they move. Flag down, play dead. Ball start. Offense, five yards from the previous spot, still third down. You know, Keith Smith has that kind of delivery like he, an infielder. Taking that nice quick snap throw. Left side. <laughs> the big guys, when you start moving a little back, it's hard to keep that weight evenly distributed on those big feet of theirs. Third down. Ten. Smith. He's got a big guy, Mike Metzler. The other tight end. First down, Arizona. And Galiaga preventing a bigger play. Arizona will throw to their tight ends. Mike Lucky has caught a pair of balls today. That's Metzler's first. Smith again to the air. A little swing pass. Incomplete. Kelvin Eaton couldn't hold it. Better job by the Husky rush down lineman to break down a little bit and not fly it. Mr. Keith Smith, you can see it from the left side here. Seems like we say his name a lot, but right there, staying in, the, keep him in the pocket a little bit, make him throw over people, keep him inside. I don't know if this kid can really throw over a lot of people at that height. That's how Arizona has designed their offense to get him outside. That's correct. 13 of 23. Into the end zone, Williams broken up. Fiala was there, along with Mel Miller. Rodney Williams, the intended receiver. Rodney Williams going out. Good hit by John Fiala. Looking at the play originally, I thought John was in great position to get a pick. High throw. Again, you're looking at Key Smith with a high delivery, trying to throw over those linemen up front. You could tell the Williams. Kind of went after that ball half-hearted. He, he <laughs> yeah. felt like he was going to get hit. He goes up with two hands, Sonny. He may be able to make the catch. He got one hand on it. Here comes a blitz. Into the end zone. Caught for an Arizona touchdown. Jeremy McDaniel with a juggling catch in the corner. And Keith Smith delivers again. Arizona is not dead yet. From Excellent Boy, throw. Are we watching a couple of gems in these red shirt freshmen and Smith and Hewitt? Just laying it out there to the far corner, the way they look at it in the red zone down here. Alex Hollowell looked like he was in position to make a play, and the ball got by him for the touchdown. Keith Smith. And his Wildcats get back on the board. Jeremy McDaniel makes the catch. A two touchdown lead, seven minutes left. Arizona called the timeout to stop the clock. Well, Dick Tomey does not want Washington going on one of those four or five minute marches right here. But it's very important for the Huskies to not get too conservative by running the ball straight in the middle a few times. Do what's been successful for him today. Keep those short passes working. Jerome Payfon outside, Dave Janoski. Throw to a back. Run the ball. 
They've mixed it up quite well today and also with the long ball a couple of big TD passes by Brock Heward. Heward has been very poised He's playing the entire football game. Sheehy in motion. Heward with time going deep. Payton dropped it. Kelly Malvo on the coverage. Heward with another nice toss. Got to make these catches. Good call, good throw. Everything but the catch. I often wonder why a receiver reaches back and doesn't turn his hands finger to finger, Richie. It's a tough catch the other way. A lot of times your hand will get inside your eye eyeball and your depth and your vision. Spoken like a true quarterback. Heward hit as he throws. Coleman is open. Coleman makes the catch at the 37 yard line. And Washington again having a lot of success when throwing deep. Flag goes down. A 37 yard pickup, and Heward paid the price. Good play action. You hate to see it when those guys are crawling around your knees. This may be on Freddie Coleman. See that guy down low like that? Van Tuine. Coleman may have been tabbed for a celebration. A 15 yard penalty. It's after the pickup, so it still will be a first down, but it will cost him 15 yards. I wasn't watching Coleman after the catch. I went back to look at Heward who was rolling on the ground. But the Washington coaching staff seemed to be in agreement. Sheehy straight ahead, close to midfield. Jimmy Sprott made the stop. Sonny, let's see what we didn't see the first time and see what Freddie did. Good catch, good throw. What did he do? I don't know. I mean, spinning I, the ball. I don't know if you can spin the ball now, Sonny. I, I, I don't think that was a rule change. It well, must have been. He, he must have thrown it, or as he spun it, maybe it hit an official. Maybe they perceived it as being a spike. Sort of a stylish spike. Well, but a spike nonetheless. Well, he didn't raise his arm and do it in anger. I mean, it was just like a nice little twister, get away with it. I, pretty questionable call. But that's one thing that in college football they've tried to do in the last year or two. And I think they've been pretty successful at, at cleaning up the taunting. You can no longer take your helmet off on the field and celebrate, mm -hmm. which grew very tiresome. Yes, it did, thanks to Miami. <laughs> <laughs> well, then were, everybody started doing yeah. it. Boy, the redshirt freshman Brock Hewitt, three touchdowns, one interception, and 311 yards. He's the first freshman to throw for over 300 yards significantly sunny. It means that Washington is is spreading the field and getting the football down the field. He's had some big big pops today. Yes he has. He's also uh, for him on that stat. There hasn't been too many freshmen that have played Husky football at quarterback. It's hard to say that there won't be a uh, quarterback situation <laughs> next week. Or excuse me two weeks. It's a good point. Shane Fortney, of course, with the strained knee. Heward getting the start in his place. But I will say this about Brock Heward. He'll go with the flow. Hey, the guy spent some time. He was number one. I came in. I'm a nice fill in, I would say, with 20 for 30 and three TDs. Interesting to see what will happen at that situation. And obviously, he's not done yet here. Six and a half minutes left. And Washington needs to keep moving the football, or else Arizona will get it back. Corey Dillon, Corey Dillon 
to the 46. And Arizona has called their last timeout, Sonny. I don't think I've ever seen a team use their timeouts all in a row with this much time on the clock. 6-11 left. Since Dick Tomey calls timeout, we'll follow suit. Washington on top, 31-17. On first down, Heward's pass is incomplete. Looking for Rashawn Sheehy. Brock Heward is planted on the AstroTurf back at his own 45, and now he gets up. So Washington will be forced to punt. Sonny, Dick Tomey's strategy of burning the timeout seemed to have worked. He, he's going to get the football back with significant clock remaining. Obviously, he's got to put 14 points up in that six minutes and eight seconds. I guess Seems when you use those three timeouts, the last thing you want to have happen is the clock roll down. Sarshar will punt. A fair catch at the 11. McAllister making that block as Williams made the catch. And a good effort from Sarshar. And we'll see Keith Smith now. And it's Arizona bunch. There was absolutely nobody looking at Sarshar in that play. They kind of was a half-hearted effort to rush the punter. <laughs> he could have ran down the right sideline for 15, 20 yards. This crowd starting to make some noise. Arizona drove 80 yards, remember, when they were backed up the last time. Smith flag goes down. Smith is out of bounds. This will probably come back. John Fiala chased him out. Good job. Quarterback. Good pressure up the middle there again. Getting written down. Look, <laughs> he is so quick. Jerry Jensen had a chance to get him and let him slip through. Half the distance to the goal from the spot of the foul. Still first down. Well, last week they got a sack in this situation, Rich. Keith Smith and the Wildcats have 98 yards to go. Little quarterback draw and he gets out of bounds. Nice play for Arizona. He gains about seven. Tony Parrish made the stop. Good call by Arizona here to take advantage of Keith Smith's abilities. Letting him get outside, however, but the good thing for Arizona, it does stop the clock, not huh, Rich. 5.47 left, Sonny. And this Arizona team trying to make something out of not much. Incomplete. Third down now. Good job by Keith Smith to unload the football. A little tough when you've got the pressure that the Huskies are applying right now. Mm. Good Big hit. hit. Jeremiah Farms, a reserve linebacker, came in and laid the lumber on Keith Smith. And so it's third and 12. Jeremiah switched his numbers on us this week, Rich. The tight end, Mike Lucky, and he has the first down. 
it seems as if Arizona when they need a big play they're able to get it to their tight ends lucky and Metzler third catch for lucky last week Atula Mealy with the big catches for BYU this week the big Mike lucky looked like some confusion here from Kyle Roberts number three he pointed at 57 Fiala who isn't going to be in coverage 6 7 2 70 is lucky that's an awful lot of luck caught and it, Richard Dice the Wildcats like to let him go up and get the football he's very strong and very big and he's had a pretty good day here yes he has have to get some pressure on the quarterback here contain him in the pocket 515 clock runs Smith escapes trying to get outside he gets by Roberts stays on his feet look at that that is a smart running quarterback Keith Smith he could have just ducked out of bounds but he saw he had a lane study and he picks up an additional eight to ten yards look like Don Makita against Oregon many years ago fooling the defense he's taking a quick look now and I don't blame him with his ability to be able to scramble like he does and his speed excellent job picked up the extra yardage Husky defenders are going to have to they have to find one guy to just stay with him. Five minutes left Smith for McDaniel intercepted Miller has his second. Throws his third pick of the day. Good coverage by Mel Miller. Ball wasn't a thing of beauty. Mel Miller with the pick, but Key Smith would love to have that one back. That was not really the way he's been throwing the ball this afternoon long. Maybe he's tired. He's been running around back there so much, he may have short armed it a little bit. And now with four minutes and 53 seconds Arizona cannot stop the clock. The only question is can they stop Washington. If they can they'll get the ball back. Corey Dillon stopped at the 14 yard Corey line. Dillon, the ball carrier, gained out two yards. Two yard pickup. If Washington can get two first downs. They can probably run this thing out. Took 15 seconds by the time he was down, by the time they started the clock on the play clock, Rich. Take a few of those and uh, 30 seconds. Second and eight. But you're right, Sonny. You brought the point up about, oh, 15 minutes ago. Washington can't just settle for up the gut and two or three yards. Dillon. It'll be third down and about five. Gain on four. Jimmy's the look at Smith, everybody patting him on the back. The guys played a heck of a ball game so far, except for the interceptions, but uh, he's going to be reckoned with. Redshirt freshman. He's going to give a lot of people fits this season. Third down, three yards to go. Third down, call it a long three. Kiaho in motion. Dylan, he has the first down and more. It will move the chains. Washington has a first down. Three and a half minutes left. Big first down right there, Rich. Big first down. The Huskies get the ball moved out to the 30 yard line. The clock will keep running. Look at the hole in here. Good cutback right there. Mr. Fifth, there's no way that he can make the play. It does trip him up. Got one little paw out there to trip him up. Washington's numbers continue to total up. Dylan sort of stumbled and almost bobbled the ball. A gain of two. 
Under three minutes left. There are the numbers again, Sonny. You can see Arizona has moved the football in the second half. They don't have a whole lot to show for it. Just that one touchdown pass from Smith to Jeremy McDaniel. Two big turnovers. One for a touchdown. Jim Lambright and the Huskies. Tony Parrish's 45 yard interception return looms rather large. Dylan up the middle. He'll gain four. And now third down and a, probably that same situation in which Dylan snapped off a 10 to 12 yard run. Third down and about four. Under two minutes left. Arizona's defense used to be known as Desert Swarm. They call them Desert Swipe now. Seven interceptions coming into the ball game. They have one today. Dylan. Here he goes. Corey Dylan. Still on his feet. Ball game. A 41 yard run. And Washington can down it three times. Good luck here, Rich, from the end zone. Good blocking up front. Olin Troops absolutely taking his man off to the sidelines. The big fella just rambling down. You're not going to grab him by the shirt to bring him down there, boy. You got to wrap him up. Good running, Corey Dillon. 125 yards on 20 carries. Coming in, he was averaging 6'9. Up to 6 3 this afternoon. Sheehy behind Kiaho. And it's Sheehy. He oh. lost the football, but Kiaho jumps on it. George Kiaho, the sophomore at Aventura, with a heads up play. My goodness. With a minute left, Washington needs to just kneel down. Yeah, no sense uh, risking that. You know, you. You imagine Rashawn Sheehy sitting on the sideline watching Corey Dillon making big yardage with the offense. He, maybe he's trying a little too hard at this stage of the ball game. Keep both hands on it and just fall down. Well, there's no need to even hand off. No. I mean, go to one knee and go home with a win. And you can see that the Joe Pizarchik <laughs> formation. <laughs> What was he on it? Wasn't he the New York Giant quarterback that fumbled on that in a similar situation? Yes. He was just there. Miller trying to run the clock out and fumbled and returned by Philadelphia, I believe. For yeah, a for a touchdown. It's the only way Philadelphia could win the game, <laughs> and they did. On the offense, but it's five yards for the previous spot. Still second down. The Joe Pazarczyk formation is not legal, or at least it wasn't there. The <laughs> The Huskies were moving. 11 seconds left. And the clock will expire now. Washington will win this football game. It is over. And Washington has defeated Arizona. The Huskies are 2 and 1. And even. In the Pac-10 at one and one, Arizona two and two, they are 0 and one in the conference. And Washington joins that exclusive club, six wins behind Michigan. Only six schools in the history of college football have won 300 at home. This has been their home since 1920, and the Huskies win today, 31-17.
Final score Washington defeats Arizona by a score of 31 to 17. Win number 300 at Husky Stadium for the Huskies. Hi everyone, Rich Waltz, Sunny Six Killer. All right, redshirt freshman, that was the theme. Keith Smith for Arizona, Brock Heward for Washington. I thought Heward had an outstanding day. Over 300 yards, three touchdowns, just the one interception. I think he passed the test. I would say so. It's going to be very tough for Coach Lambright and that coaching staff in two weeks when Stanford comes to town. Who's going to be the starter? Brock has a great attitude about the whole thing. Keith Smith for Arizona. Hey, he's going to give guys fits for the rest of the season down the road for Arizona. Final score from Husky Stadium. Washington 31, Arizona 17. For my producer John Bradford, director Bill Cooper, Sonny Sixkiller, I'm Rich Waltz. Washington wins it.